everyone, welcome back. Today I am going to start building a project that has been requested many, many times by readers. And that is an outdoor dining chair. So almost three, maybe four years ago, I built an outdoor dining table. And I will add a link to that video down below. But it's a super simple, straightforward project. At that time, I did not have the time to design and build matching chairs, but I always wanted to. And since it's been requested so many times, we are doing that today. But before we start building, a quick shout out to Mendocino Redwood for sponsoring this project. I am using Redwood Lumber to build the chairs. That's exactly what I used to build the outdoor dining table as well. So they're gonna match perfectly and they're gonna look so good. So let's go. As always, I have the full detailed plans, including the dimensions, the cut list, and schematics with the step-by-step -step tutorial available to you. And I will add a link to that in the description below. As I mentioned, I am using Mendocino Redwood to build this project. Mendocino Redwood is grown and harvested in accordance with some of the highest environmental standards in the world. From conserving energy to absorbing greenhouse gases, no other building material offers the environmental advantages that come naturally with Redwood. There are some angles involved in this project, and you want to save all the offcuts. I like to set up my saw at that angle and keep it there and make all the cuts at one go so I get a consistent angle across all the cuts. All right, you guys, we've got all the boards cut up, sanded, ready to go. The thing with this project is that I am going to be using a few different types of joinery techniques to make sure that the project is not just super sturdy, but also looks good. So the first step is to build the back support. And to do that, I'm going to be using half lap cuts. So there's a half lap cut between the back and the side here. So we're going to be doing that. And the half lap cut is at a 15 degree angle. So we're going to set that up. There are many different ways you can make half lap cuts. You can do it on the table saw, you can do it on your miter saw, or you can use a circular saw. With the table saw, I would have to create a jig to make sure that the boards stay at a 15 degree angle, as well as I, it's not quite safe. So we're going to just use a circular saw. It's pretty straightforward to do it with a circular saw as well. You just have to be a little bit careful to make sure that you follow the lines. So let me show you how to set that up. So I know exactly how far from the front edge the back support is going to be and I've already marked that right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this with that mark right there. Make sure it's aligned and then I am going to go ahead and mark the cut right here and also I'm going to be marking it right here so those are the lines where I want to make my half lap cut so now we're going to go ahead and make the half lap cuts on both of these now the great thing is that both of these can be done at the same time I can just align them up and make the cuts this way and we will be done with the half lap cut. That ensures that they are both equal and uniform and I get to finish them off in one go. Now in order to set up the circular saw blade thickness, you wanna find the center of your board. Now of course you can measure it and find the center, but I like to make sure that we are getting the true center, the true thickness of the board. Now it basically makes the entire process a lot easier and the easiest way to do that is to mark two parallel lines that are per perfectly perpendicular to the sides and then join them And then that line right here, we can use this, this way. And we can use that, make sure it's, high. and that is the true center of the board. So I can use that line to set up my circular saw blade. So I set up the circular saw blade to the depth I needed. I lined up my boards and clamped them down and then went ahead and made the cuts. You wanna start by cutting out the two ends of the half lap cut 
and then you can just go ahead and make lots and lots of passes between those two cuts. Now comes one of my favorite parts of a half lap cut, cleaning it out. I love using the chisel to remove all of those pieces and just cleaning the cut out. I found that the cut was just about not fitting, so I went ahead and shaved off a tiny bit on one of the ends. Once I was sure that the fit was great, I went ahead and applied wood glue. I am using waterproof outdoor wood glue because that will last a long time in the outdoor weather. And that is it. This is a perfect half lap cut fit. I went ahead and added a couple of countersunk screws for added strength. And then I used a plug cutter bit to cut out plugs from one of the scrap pieces of redwood boards. I added the plugs to the screw holes. You want to make sure that the grain is aligned with the face of the board. Once they were in, I went ahead and used some masking tape to protect around the plugs and used my flush trim saw to cut off the excess plugs. Once they're sanded smooth, the plugs are almost seamless. And that is the angled backrest. And I built two of these for each side of the chair. So now that the back is ready, it is now time to attach the back slats. Now, the, there are a few different ways you can attach this. Of course, you can use pocket hole screws, but I didn't want to use pocket hole screws because in that case, you would have all the pocket holes visible on the back. You could fill them up with pocket hole plugs, but I was going for a more seamless look. So what we are going to do is we are going to use dowel joinery. Now, dowel joinery, you can use a dowel jig, which is great if you are making butt joints, which means that you're attaching this edge to this edge. However, if you are attaching an edge to the face of a board, it gets a little bit complicated because this clamps onto the edge and this does not clamp onto the face. So I was trying to figure out what's the best way to put this together. I tried a few different techniques. I used a drill press, which worked out pretty decently. It worked out perfectly. I mean, the thing with dowel joinery is that you want to make the dowel hole at perfectly precisely the point where you need it to go. So as long as you're able to do that, you can get nice dowel joinery. The drill press worked just fine. However, this is huge and I wouldn't be able to use that on my drill press. So I was looking for an alternative solution and we came up with this little guy. This is a drill guide and it works really well because it has a non-slip surface so it stays on the face of the board and you can make the holes and it also stays really well on the edge of the board and you can make the hole it's got alignment marks and it worked really beautifully and reproducibly every time I tried it so we're gonna go ahead and make all the holes for the dowel joints it's going to be a lot of measuring a lot of labeling a lot of marking because we have four slats here and then we're gonna attach this onto the other side so we have the dowel holes for the other side as well so we're gonna make all the measurements mark everything make those holes and get everything aligned and in I might be a little bit nervous about that but Let's get it done. I started by lining up each of the slats in exactly the position that they were going to be and drawing two lines across the joint and made sure to label them so I knew exactly which orientation the boards went in. I aligned the half inch line on the drill guide to the lines I had drawn and went ahead and made holes for the dowels. I'm using masking tape to set up the depth on the drill to see exactly how deep I need to go. And that is the first dowel joint. I just went ahead and repeated it over and over again for all four slats on the back. Once they were all in, I aligned the other side onto the top, made all the marks for the dowel hole joints went ahead and made the dowel holes. And everything works. 
And since the dry fit was working just fine, I went ahead and used wood glue and attached all of those dowels and dowel joints together. Clamp them up and set them to dry overnight. Now while the back was drying, I went ahead and assembled the sides, which are basically the front leg, the back leg, and the armrest. Once again, here I used dowel joinery because I did not want pocket holes to be visible on either side of the armrests. Clamping these is where those cutoffs we saved come really handy because then you can make sure that the clamps work perfectly on both ends in spite of the angle. So next up we need to add the front and the back of the seat as well as the seat slats. Now this can also be attached using dowel joinery and in that case you would have to use the dowels and attach it at the same time as we were attaching the back slats. But I'm just going to go ahead and use pocket holes because I can easily put them underneath the seat and they will be hidden. So let's go ahead and make those pocket holes. These pocket holes are made using an inch and a half setting because that is the thickness of these two by four boards. So guess what? I totally forgot that I needed pocket holes on these two ends of these sides to attach to the front apron. I was so anxious to get the half laps and the dowels to work. I totally forgot about that, but that's okay. I can use the correct 720 and put it on its side and make those pocket holes. You can also use the correct 320 or the 520, uh, put it on the horizontal configuration and make those pocket holes. So let's do that. With the pocket holes in place, I went ahead and attached the front apron. Clamps are your best friend in this case because they will keep the boards aligned exactly where you need them to be. I also added the back apron using pocket hole screws. All of these pocket holes are going to be inside and under the seat slats, so I don't have to worry about them being visible. And I thought that this was also a good time to go ahead and give it a light sanding to remove any glue residue and just get it ready for a stain. Now for the key part, attaching the seat to the sides. You really want to make sure that the seat is perfectly level. So I measured and marked the exact distance of the seat from the top of the armrest. I made sure it worked perfectly. I actually used a scrap piece of 1x2 and made sure it was level. And when I was satisfied, I went ahead and added lots of wood glue. And then used countersunk screws to attach the seat onto the legs in three different spots. One in the front leg, one on the back leg, and one on the seat support. Once I'd attached both the sides, it was a good time to test the stability of the chair. And since it worked perfectly, I used the plugs I cut with my plug cutter bit and filled in all the countersunk holes. This is a good time to go ahead and stain the seat slats as well as the chair. I could have also stained those back slats before attaching, but I was really anxious about getting those dowel joints to work, so I didn't do that. But the back slats are an inch and a half apart and there's enough space to get in there and get the stain in. For the stain, I am using a weatherproofing deck stain in the color Redwood. I have used this on all of the Redwood furniture I have built in the past and it works very well against the elements. Once the stain was dry, I went ahead and attached the seat slats using pocket hole screws. And that, my friends, is the chair.
It's a simple chair that can be used as an outdoor dining chair or just as a regular chair in a porch or patio. The chair can also be used with 17 inch seat cushions to make it extra comfy. The great thing about Redwood is that it not only looks gorgeous, it is also pretty lightweight and can be easily moved around, which is what you need in a chair. And don't forget, I have the full printable plans available for you linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. In the meantime, here are some other projects that you might enjoy.